In 1719, young Comanche Nerid goes herb gathering with her dog, Sariai, in the northern Great Plains. But when no one is looking, she sneaks away from the group to practice her axe throwing against a tree. She discovers some paw prints on the ground and follows them to find a white-tailed deer, which she decides to hunt. The plan is to sneak around and surprise the animal, but the sound of a rumble in the sky scares it away. Neru and Sariai pursue it, and Neru attempts to hit it with her axe, but fails, and the axe becomes stuck on a tree instead. While she recovers it, Sariai continues on and gets his tail caught in a bear trap. Forgetting about the deer, Nera rushes to save her dog and treat his tail with medicinal herbs. She also inspects the trap because she's never seen anything like it before, but she's cut off by the sky rumbling once more. When she looks up, she sees a strange shape falling and believes it is the legendary Thunderbird. Nera goes to see her brother Tabe, believing this is a sign to finally begin a rite of passage, and asks him to take her with his party the next time he goes hunting, and while skeptical, he accepts. Neru then returns to the tribe to drop off the herbs she's collected. While preparing medicine for the chief, Neru's mother Aruka wonders why her daughter must hunt when she excels at so many other things, to which Neru responds that it's because they all think she can't. Meanwhile, it is revealed that the rumble from the sky is caused by a spaceship dropping an alien known as Predator on Earth. He's fast and strong, and his technology includes camouflage that makes him invisible as well as heat vision goggles. Back at Nera's house, she goes to the forest to get some orange flowers for her mother and keeps some for herself in her bag. When she returns to the tribe, she learns that a mountain lion has kidnapped one of their men and that a hunting party is heading out to find them. Nera follows them with the intention of joining them, but some of the men don't want her there because she hasn't been trained to hunt like them. Tabe defends her, explaining that she's good at tracking and medicine and that she's allowed to join them because she might be useful. A predator is also in the area, killing a snake. The hunting party eventually finds their wounded friend, Puhi, by following the mountain lion's tracks. The hunters construct a stretcher while Nera tends to the Puhi's injuries, including feeding him some orange flowers to cool his blood. Now that the party is ready to return Puhi, Tabe stays behind to find the mountain lion. Nera wants to stay with him because she believes there is something else besides the lion, Puhi's survival implies that something dangerous must have scared the lion away. Tabe, on the other hand, refuses her and forces her to leave. Neru initially walks away from the party as her brother instructed, but she comes to a halt when she notices some strange things around her, paw prints too large to be bears, a carefully skinned snake, and blood on the top of a tree. She wishes to warn Tabe, so the party sends Paik to protect her while the others return to their tribe. Because Tabe wants to give her the chance she requested, the pair tracks down Tabe and assists him in his hunt for the lion using Neru's plan. While Tabe prepares the bait, Neru and Paik climb a tree to await the lion, which arrives sooner than expected. The lion leaps high enough to knock Peg off the tree and kill him, then leaps onto a branch to pursue Neru. She takes a slow step back as she tries to defend herself with a spear, but she is distracted by the rumble in the sky once more. This allows the lion to pursue her, throwing her off the tree and knocking her out. When Neru awakens, she's back in the tribe, and Aruka explains that Tabe dragged her there. Puhi has also survived thanks to her medicine, so Aruka believes Neru should devote her life to medicine rather than hunting. Their conversation is cut short when Tabe returns with the lion's body, an accomplishment recognized by the chieftain. Neru is still convinced that there is something more dangerous in the woods and wishes to pursue it, but Tabe forbids her. She already tried hunting and failed, and it was entirely up to him to bring the lion back. Neru decides to disobey and pursue the mysterious presence with only Sariai's company the next morning. As she travels through the forest, she discovers more evidence of this unknown creature, such as green blood on trees and more of those massive paw prints. Predator is not far away, this time hunting a wolf to obtain its skull, which he cleans and uses as a mask. Neru, on the other hand, does not have the same luck with her hunts. Because hitting moving targets is more difficult than hitting a tree, her prey has vanished by the time she recovers her throwing axe. Fortunately, she has an idea, she ties some vines together to make a rope, which she then ties to the axe, allowing her to throw it and immediately retrieve it without losing time. This finally allows her to go rabbit hunting for herself and the dog. Nera comes across a herd of skinned bison with bullets on the ground around them after a long walk. She has no idea what bullets are and believes this strange creature is to blame. She accidentally steps into quicksand as she leaves the area. Fortunately, she still has her axe, so she throws it at a tree, and when it gets properly stuck, 
she uses the rope to pull herself out. Meanwhile, Predator encounters the bison, who warns him that there are dangerous hunters in the area. Back to Neru, she comes across a grizzly bear that she intends to hunt after washing up in the river. Unfortunately, her bell breaks, allowing the bear to pursue her. Saria intervenes to distract the beast, allowing Neru to jump into the river and hide beneath a beaver dam. The bear pursues her again, attempting to destroy the dam, but is suddenly repelled by Predator. Neru finally sees the alien thanks to the bear bleeding on him and immediately jumps back into the river to swim away. Predator notices her but lets her go because she isn't dangerous to him. Neru returns to the woods and comes across a search party Tabe has sent to find her while he searches the other side of the river. They don't believe Neru's story because a monster like Wazape would not let her go so easily, and when Neru tries to flee, Wazape leaps on her to stop her. Neru fights valiantly, but Wazape prevails, tying her up and dragging her toward camp. They come to a halt, however, when they hear strange noises and see red lights on Wazape's chest. Predator shoots and kills Wazape while remaining invisible among the trees, and when he comes closer to retrieve his darts, the other hunters manage to hit him with an arrow. The camouflage cloak malfunctions, revealing Predator to the naked eye. The men charge in to fight him, but Predator is no match for them and easily kills them. While he is fighting, Nero approaches Wazape's body to retrieve her belongings and cut the rope, allowing her to flee. Nero comes across a hunter who had scouted ahead of her in an open field. He wants to fight back, but the red lights begin to appear on his body as well. Nero, now understanding what they mean, begins fleeing as Predator leaps on and kills her fellow tribesmen. She's so focused on the enemy that she doesn't notice a bear trap on the ground and gets her leg caught in it. Predator pursues her while weighing his options, but he abruptly flees when he notices a group of French traders approaching to see who fell into their trap. Neru is knocked unconscious by the traders, and when she awakens, she finds herself in a cage at their camp. Saria has come to look for her, but he has also been apprehended and imprisoned. Neru notices that all of the traders are dressed in furs, and he realizes that they are the ones who killed the bison. Raphael, one of these men, understands how to communicate with her and requests information on Predator, whom he believes is a hunter looking for the strongest opponent. Nero remains silent, prompting the traitors to reveal that they have also captured Tabe and are now torturing him in order to make him smell of blood. Tabe and Nero are then tied to a tree as prey to attract Predator so that the traitors can shoot him from their hiding places. However, the traitors fail to consider Predator's camouflage, and he approaches them without their knowledge, killing them one by one. When Tabe hears the screaming, Neru explains that Predator doesn't want bait because he hunts differently, and he's always let her go because she's not a threat. Tabe admits that he only killed the lion because he followed Neru's plan, so she did something back then to make her feel better about her hunting abilities. Their conversation is cut short when a Predator roars in rage after his leg becomes entangled in a bear trap. The French traders rush after him, but Predator recovers quickly and, after tossing the trap away, begins killing them with a variety of advanced weapons and a shield that shields them from their bullets. The throne trap lands near the tree, allowing Neru to cut the rope with it. Tabe, now free, goes to find some horses, and Neru goes to save Sariai, while Predator kills the majority of the remaining men with a grenade. The traitors are gathering their belongings to flee the French camp, and they intend to kill Sariai. Neru charges in to fight and kill them all, and after freeing her dog, she sends him to find Tabe. Raphael finds her when she starts applying herbs to her injuries. He's missing a leg, so he proposes a trade, in exchange for medicine, he'll give her his flintlock pistol and teach her how to use it. Nero accepts and shares her orange flowers with him, as well as the alien technology she discovers on his leg. Meanwhile, Predator is tending to his own injuries before joining the camp. Nero hears him approaching and flees, while Raphael pretends to be dead. The trick actually works, thanks to the orange flowers cooling his blood, and Predator is unaware of it until he accidentally steps on Raphael, causing him to scream. Predator quickly kills him as Sariai arrives to attack, but before the dog can be shot, Tabe arrives on horseback. He manages to hit Predator on the head once, and by riding in circles quickly, he avoids the alien's shots. Nair yells at Predator to distract him after he fails to use the pistol correctly, allowing Tabe to jump off the horse and land a hit on him. Predator and Tabe are now fighting hand to hand, and because Tabe is such a skilled warrior, Predator decides to use his camouflage to gain an advantage. He attacks Tabe from behind, intending to kill him, but Tabe refuses and grabs Predator's leg, 
giving Nera time to flee. Back in the tribe, another search party returns to inform Aruka that they were unable to locate her children. Aruka weeps for them as Nera reaches the river and washes her tears over her brother's death. Sariai finds her and informs her of a Frenchman who is still in the area, so Nera uses the alien weapon he stole from Raphael to knock him out. When he awakens, he finds himself in a camp where Nera was preparing to hunt Predator. She's painted her face and eaten some orange flowers to cool her blood, she's also let the Frenchman keep his pistol, despite the fact that it's empty. His screams, however, attract Predator, who sees the armed traitor as a threat and approaches him to kill him. He completely ignores Nera because he can't see her, so Nera takes advantage of the situation by shooting him from behind. A pistol doesn't kill him, but it causes him to drop the mask, which Nera grabs before fleeing to the area where she's set a trap. Predator follows a trail of blood that Nera purposefully left behind, and when he gets too close, Nera leaps on him and fights him hand to hand. After exchanging a few blows and hiding among rocks to avoid his shield, Nera orders Saria to run by as a distraction and manages to push Predator into the quicksand she had previously fallen into. This is obviously insufficient to kill him, but Nera is prepared. When Predator reappears and shoots, Nera quickly moves away, allowing the projectile to strike the mask she had left there earlier. This causes the projectile to rebound, killing Predator instead. Nera returns to the tribe the next morning with the Predator's head and the pistol, which is revealed to be Harrigan's weapon from another Predator story. Nera warns her tribe that they must leave before the white men arrive, but first, everyone honors her hunt in the same way they did Tabe's. Unbeknownst to them, more Predator ships are on their way to Earth. 